Where were the African-American players in the NBA who knew when they were going to play for this guy that he did not rent apartments to Hispanics and African-Americans on purpose? Why would they agree to go play for the team then? Why were they not saying to the NBA then, I don't want to play for an owner that doesn't rent an apartment to maybe my mom or my sister if they don't know that they're related to me? That's the problem. But the issue there is a lot of people are willing to move on if the money is right. And that is one part of this conversation. But there also is a bigger picture that we should be looking at, and that is this. We have, in fact, moved on a lot in this country, and we should grin about that. We should celebrate no doubt. that we have moved on a, uh, an awful lot from when this guy was in his 20s watching what was happening in Alabama, and we should be proud of that. But at the same time, can money excuse everything with racism when people over overlook it? Yes, and all races did it, and Donald Sterling was the richest guy in the room, and other people got rich because of him, and they were willing to overlook the truth and the facts of how he denied housing to single moms and minorities all the time. But speaking of that money, let's play another clip, and it, and it shows how he might have tried to insulate at least his conscience from this, throwing money at uh, yeah. the minority community. <laughs> Here's Donald Sterling. I like to help minorities. That's why I contribute seven million dollars to the Children's Hospital for Minorities, ALA Children. I've only paid a million down, but I owe the balance. and. The United, uh, you know, the United College, the United Negro College Fund, I've been supporting them for 15 years. The NAACP, I've been supporting them every year. I, I support minorities. God has been so good to me. I'm so, if I'm talking too fast, I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm so lucky. I mean, I'm so lucky. And so I want to give. That is what my life is all about giving and helping wherever I can. Giving million dollars to the NAACP right. brings a lot of rationalization on both sides, though. Right? Well, but look at Absolutely. look at the corruption of the NAACP. They took the money knowing his past, and I think that's something else that should come out of this conversation. I, I mean, the NAACP was bought off by Sterling for a, a lifetime chapter. achievement award. He was given a lifetime achievement award, and they knew what he had actually done his business. So they're just as corrupt as Donald Sterling is on this issue, and they were going to give him a second award because he'd bought access for a plaque that he could hang on the wall that says, hey, look, I'm not a racist. The NAACP said so, and I gave him a million dollars so they would stand beside me, and that's just as corrupt as he is. Well, I don't know if I'd say it's just as corrupt. but sure I, and, 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 I don't, and I don't, I don't defend the NAACP. Let's be clear, though, that was a one chapter of the NAACP, not the entire national organization. They but took is, his money. But there is, I'm, I'm not arguing that point, Ben. We're in agreement. It's okay. We agree. But uh, with regard to the bigger issue here, I think sometimes philanthropy becomes philanthropy, where people donate money and by virtue of the donation, they feel like they can have rule and tyranny over the people. It's, it's very much a slave master plantation type of mentality. So I feed them. I give them a little bit of money. I give them a little bit of clothes. It's okay. I can do what I want to them now. I think Donald Sterling feels as if the, the $40,000 he gives to the NAACP some allow, somehow allows him to say what he wants about black people, allows him to do what he wants with players, and allows him to control housing markets in whatever way he wants. It's a, it's a really troublesome mentality. But like I said earlier, if you were to strap Donald Sterling to a, a polygraph right now and ask him, is he a racist? He'd say no, and it would, it would turn out that he was telling the truth. He absolutely believes what he's saying. He absolutely mm -hmm. thinks that he's not a racist, and that's what's so dangerous about it, because he, he, he makes no effort to, to eliminate the racism in his heart because he doesn't see it. And, and I, don't know if it's, I don't know if it's dangerous as much as it is sad. I mean, you, we are looking at, a, at a, an incredibly lost, ignorant old guy who's incredibly rich, who has been able to use his money to continue a lifestyle and to have people around him and to say whatever he wants to, including this young girl. She wouldn't have hung out with him or recorded him if he wasn't a really rich guy. And so he was used by her and a lot of others. And guess what? He used a lot of people as well. You're so cynical, Ben. You're telling me attractive 30-year-old girls don't like to hang around 80-year-old senile men? <laughs> when we're 80, let's hang out and see what happens, okay? <laughs>